Alright, kind of a response video to a general subject of the integrity of science, let's say. You know, that, you know, there's a lot of science out there that, you know, it's kind of marginal. I mean, it's based on a lot of premises, a lot of um, stipulations, things that you have to accept as true for the science to mean much. Um, this is sort of brought up because the, the modern mystic seems really confident that this economics guy is on to something by studying these old twin studies and demonstrating that somehow, you know, it's all genetics and there's no element of uh, environmental influence uh, that's uh, significant. I don't even know the parameters of that. I have to, I'll have to listen to the stupid MP3. Um, but I've always been kind of suspect of twin studies, so it's sort of a... Um, you know, sticking point for me. And then he made a response comment to some guy who, you know, is basically, um, you know, I find him kind of irritating, but, um, yeah, I mean, we really put him off just because he was making the argument that, uh, you know, you, you, and see, he said choices, but I think what he was saying is you give kids options by, you know, creating a, a better, more nutrient rich environment. I think to some extent that can't be denied. Um, you leave a kid, you know, do a twin study, you know, where one kid's, you know, illiterate and one's literate, and there's going to be a difference. So I don't even know qualitative how they even judge for these studies. Again, this is one of these things where let's survey people and ask them questions, and, uh, you know, that never goes anywhere. So anyway, as context, I am a uh, fraternal twin, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I have a twin sister, and uh, so yeah, and and so I don't even see the point of studying that kind of twin anyway, because that twin is basically just a a baby born at the same time. Um, you know, your genetic material isn't any closer to that twin than it is to other siblings. And the only thing you have in common is that you endured the same, uh, whatever, nine months or so period in a womb together and were bombarded by probably very similar chemistry. So that's the only thing that would distinguish you from some other sibling in terms of similarness. Um, so it doesn't seem very significant to me to even bother studying um, you know, twins that have, where the only distinguishing factor is they shared the same uterine experience. Um, so, I mean, obviously we were opposite sex, which also just completely makes any kind of comparison in the life struggle completely irrelevant, because you really can't compare uh, the sexual apple to the sexual orange. Anyway, um, so anyway, I, as a further context, I mean, I've always been kind of suspect of twin studies, just because I remember, well, whatever, 20 years ago or something, um, there were these twins out there who basically perpetrated a fraud, um, you know, where they, like, look how similar we are, and we were separated at birth, and it was this whole big stink, and the whole thing was basically a fraud. I mean, they had contacted each other early, previous, and... Uh, basically, you know, wore the same color shirt and did these certain things um, to make it appear like they had turned out so much more alike than they really had. And, you know, they, so I'm suspect for that reason. I mean, that, that creates one little bit. Suspect two is how many of these can there actually be? I mean, real pure twin study um, samples. I mean, I just think it's like, what, Dr. Mangula decided to separate two identical twins? I mean, what an obscene thing to do to an identical twin in the first place. I mean, it's disgusting. <laughs> and, uh, you know, how, I don't even see how somebody couldn't figure out how that would be so fucking wrong. Um, and so let's say they do do it. What, is it going to be like a divorce settlement or something? So two sadistic parents who are fighting over ownership of their child property. Um, no big surprise that the two kids might turn out the same, because obviously both their parents are assholes. 
uh, if they kept those two kids separated because of their spat. Um, then I guess the third scenario is mother, father are dead. Uh, there's two kids. Nobody wants to take the two of them. So they put them up for auction or whatever. And, uh, you know, they go completely different places. They end up in completely different worlds. All right, so let's see what those are. And let's see how many there actually are. How many examples of that where they don't have any contact with each other for 30 or 40 years at all? I mean, none. Zero. You don't even know the other one exists. And, uh, yeah, and then you, you put them in the same room and say, you know, what's your favorite sport? Uh, what's your, you know, whatever. What kind of women do you like? Um, you know, have they both been divorced three times? I just don't know if that's really going to work out all that well. So until I personally peruse the, what has to be a small database, I mean, it really can't be that big a database. Because like I said, who would deliberately separate um, a bunch of twins? So it can't have happened that many times because there had to be somebody around at the birth moment to say something sensible like, you can't separate them, you fucker. I mean, <laughs> you know, that, that's just fucking cruel. Um, yeah, I just so yeah, I just have a real hard time with saying something has been proven, which Nick is sort of saying that if you disagree with it, you're just being a troll or uh, whatever, a denier. Um, and uh, yeah, I just don't. You know, people are going to argue this new nurture nature thing forever, but I think some elements of nurture are just unavoidably influential. And so if you're just talking, well, as long as both kids grow up in an environment that has some enrichment, they're not beaten or molested, uh, they both grow up in a, a, an environment, a, a, a world, you know, that isn't too hostile, like gangs on the street versus the suburbs or something, that, um, yeah, they, they might come out relatively similar. Um, yeah, so what? <laughs> Damn water. Fuck. All right, anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> Whoops, camera. Uh, sorry, it moved. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I really have to get the hang of this again. <sighs> Doing a little different than I used to. Different camera. Anyway. So yeah, that's sort of my take on it. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, suspect that um, uh, nature's the big game and nurture's the small game. I think nurture's still the big game. Uh, you can ruin a kid. I think that's pretty much the truth. Uh, maybe you can't force it to be spectacular, but we know that Tiger Woods wouldn't be the greatest golfer in the world if his father didn't make him into it. That's just the truth. Would he still have been a successful young lad who would have grown to celebrity? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, so destinies do change based on the environment that nurtures you. That's just the truth. Um, whether it matters whether you have piano lessons or watch Teletubbies, Maybe that doesn't matter, uh, but there's lots of stuff that will matter, and I think it's just uh, preposterously idiotic to make the argument from twin studies that uh, you should just have kids and neglect them uh, because they all turn out the same. That is, yeah, I mean, it's just fucking idiotic and irresponsible because, uh, yeah, I don't buy it for a minute. Um, people aren't in the slums, and the slums don't continue to exist because of a nature problem. I just think that's uh, idiotic. Uh, it's, no, it's a nurture problem. People in Africa 
uh, are living in shit. Not because of a nurture problem, I mean a nature problem. It's because of a nurture problem. Uh, so this is just, I just don't think it's very constructive to say it's been proven that it doesn't matter. No. <laughs> no, that's, that's going too far for my taste. Anyway, I guess enough on that. To address the, uh, I don't know, I guess he's Australian or he's, he's a Kiwi. I don't know which one. Um, you know, basically concede, look, you're conceding you had kids for a selfish reason. So you're sort of out of the subject. You're, you're off topic now. The topic is, is there a legitimate, purposeful, rational, responsible reason to perpetuate that to take the risk of having a kid, to take the risk that he'll be born retarded, have 39 corrective surgeries to keep him alive and die at 19 uh, a virgin. Is there some fucking reason to take that risk? Some rational reason. And uh, I'm selfish is not a very good argument. So you shouldn't have said that one. <laughs> you know, oh, it's going to benefit me. I have somebody to play with in my old age. Somebody to take care of me in my old age. Again, these are not great reasons. I enjoy it. Not a good reason. Uh, I don't exist for, to, to be somebody's entertainment. Uh, that's bullshit. If they can't have a better reason to create me, then I'm going to be a little resentful. Because that's just a pile of shit. Um, fuck that crap. Humans got to do a little better than that. That's what that big brain behind your eyes is for. It's for measuring your responsibility to the world and to the toys you decide to create. Because those toys are going to live a life and they're going to endure things that maybe you didn't anticipate. And... Uh, so who are you to make those decisions? Um, so yeah, you really didn't address the subject. Uh, if you're going to cop out with, I'm human, I have a right. You even said something about your immortality. I mean, guess what? There ain't no such thing. You're not going to be immortal, fella. <laughs> okay, your prodigy, at the best case scenario is they live for another few thousand years and a comet blows a big giant hole in the planet. Or, they might even go longer than that, and some other catastrophe is going to wipe this place out. I won't even talk about the impossible, unsustainable resource problem, the unsustainable violence problem. I mean, those are just, you know, that's, that shit's going to happen in a few decades, not even a hundred years. That one's going to blow you up, your prodigy up. Uh, so yeah, this immortality thing ain't gonna happen. And even in the best case scenario, uh, you know, you, you, we're never gonna have the technology to stop galaxies from crashing into each other. So your, your prodigy is fucked anyway. Um, and the last point you made, what was the other one? Uh, that was another one of these just cliche things, but I should mention it because you mentioned it. Let's see, immortality. Uh, selfish, uh, what was the other one? Damn. Um, oh, I'm gonna wait for it, because it was, I wanted to get to it. Yeah, I usually don't have this problem, but... Gary getting old. Brain no function good no more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, let's see. Yeah, immortality. Humans are better than cockroaches or something like that. So we should, we should be here instead of something else. This whole idea that life is inevitable is just stupid. Um, it's not. It exists at our indulgence. We have the power to sanitize planet Earth. Um, I won't go through all the ways we can do it, but you can use your imagination. Trust me. Uh, if we really want to do it, we can put a nuclear bomb every two miles and uh, liquefy the whole dump. Um, anyway, what was the other damn point? <sighs> DNA is nothing to be proud of. It's DNA. It's a dumb molecule. 
why should we take marching orders from a molecule? I gotta do better than that. Uh, shit, there was some other point he made. Uh, yeah, well, it just isn't gonna come to me. So, that's enough anyway. Um, yeah, that's really enough of a video. But yeah, this whole pseudoscience thing is a little tricky. I mean, there was somebody, I didn't even make a video about it, but you know, this research on, you know, humans and their uh, past dietary habits. I mean, it's just incredibly bad science. Some idiot forced me to go read a bunch of crap, uh, you know, about the, that silly documentary I commented on before. And the crap just verified my point. They concede that all you need is, uh, you know, one odd circumstance where the hominoid is eating walnuts or something. The teeth marks will be different. You'll draw a completely different conclusion. And it has nothing to do with anything except for that hominoid just happened to have walnut trees available. So, I mean, this whole thing is just stupid. It's junk science. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't even indicate much. And, uh, yeah, it just pushes it. But that's the nature of science lately. It's all gone a little bit too quantum. You know, NASA's been caught a couple of times. You know, we've invented life. We got life that, you know, the DNA molecules changed and it's all a bunch of hype and hoopla and it's bullshit. We found a microbe in a uh, meteor and they didn't find shit. I mean, it's just bull. Um, yeah, that's enough. Yeah. Messy here too, damn it. Too so much freaking water. Alright. So. Yeah, till next time. Sorry, I just can't remember that third point. What would an Australian guy in a funny hat, what would he argue? Uh, mud puddle? No. Yeah, no, I just don't, can't remember. Alright, enough already. Till next time.